call to order the December 9th meeting of the Dearborn Board of Education. Sorry, we're late. We had a prior hearing today. Can we have a roll call, please? Hussein Berry. Here. Joseph Guido. Here. Mary Lane. Here. Roxanne McDonald. Here. Amy Shellis. Here. James Schoolmaster. Here. President Adams. Here. Next item. <clears throat> Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Ms. Pamela Deneen, Principal of Lindbergh Elementary School, will introduce students who will lead the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all hi right thank you it's Lindbergh's mm -hmm. pleasure to introduce uh, Brenna Thorpe and Nicholas Thorpe Brenna's in this grade in Miss Liebig's room and Nick is in Mrs. Noe's first grade room and they are very excited to say the pledge as you can tell um, and they they uh, have their they brought their mom and dad with them too which is important to know they're very involved in the Lindbergh community dad is father vice president and mom was even co-chair of our haunted school event so the whole Thorpe family is very busy with Lindbergh so thank you very much for having us this evening and thank you for taking the time have a good holiday break next item no tell them that they'll think it starts tomorrow <laughs> not yet <laughs> it feels like it does a couple, couple more days <laughs> Superintendent's update, agenda items. Agenda items, you do see that three people are retiring with more than 20 years of service. Mona Adjami Smith, math teacher, 26 and a half years. Christine Phelan, a Howe paraprofessional, 20 and a half years. Darlene Teasley, Dearborn interpreter technician, 28 and three quarter years service. So we certainly congratulate all who are retiring, but we certainly want to point those out to some people who have served more than 20 years. So congratulations to them. Then on non-agenda items, the legislature continues to debate an expansion of the EAA uh, school district, uh, reform school district. They're still talking about mandated third grade retention and still talking about moving from a color-coded system to something like the Florida leather, letter grade system. In addition, they are looking at um, uh, merit curriculum modifications to include some of the make it a little easier to take some of the um, programs uh, like technology, uh, th programs at the Michael Berry Center type things. Senate is continuing to debate the carry guns and no carry zones and expanding who can carry in those no carry zones. And then safety drills, they're looking at re re uh, re changing the requirements for the types of drills and the number of drills that we have uh, including some reporting requirements after the drills have have happened so we'll keep you posted on those mary has a question Tristan lane uh, superintendent wiston i wonder if uh you have a recommendation i'm interested in the third grade no pass um, legislation i'm quite bothered by it but i wonder if the superintendent's association has a stand yeah, on that it? Uh, our position is an opposition that one it should be a local decision made by the local expert the teacher and, and administrators and as you know in Dearborn we're trying to address the problem through parental contracts talking about what we're going to do in schools to help students get back on track and asking the parents to join us in that partnership so again anything mandated uh, from the state takes away our local flexibility and the brain research is pretty clear that kids develop at different ages and so a kid could be a month behind and you're going to hold them back you know a student could be a year behind and you're going to hold them back now obviously we have real concerns with that on the other hand we have concerns with kids getting to high school you know reading at second grade level of so course we all have that concern right. and nobody wants that to to happen but right. I, I hope that your association is lobbying yep. the state legislature I thought their policy was not to micromanage and smaller government and all that blah 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 but uh, well, regardless of all that we can't even agree on a standardized test for anything much less a pass fail grade it just blows my mind that that they would make that based on a test which that, there isn't one right now that no one can even agree on I and mean our MEEP tests are changed from year to year to year to year 
So I, I, it's incredibly punitive to me, but sorry, that was my two cents. It's always moving. Well, and it's, yeah. it's just punitive, not, not constructive. Well, I, I, I hope you're lobbying hard. We are. Mm -hmm. So are the school boards. The Tri County Alliance yeah. is school. also yeah. against yeah. it. I think opposed. charter schools, everyone. Maybe is we on should the same start page. making some, um, maybe we should start trying to pass some resolutions regarding, you know, balanced budgets at the state level or perhaps some of their other issues that they don't seem to be spending too much time working on. Here, here. Mm -hmm. That'd be nice. We could take up wolf hunting. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, at the end of your yep. mm -hmm. I'll use my next item. Citizen participation. <clears throat> Citizens wishing to address the board on agenda and non agenda items for action who are signed in by seven ten PM by submitting a blue card to the secretary may speak at this time. Uh, I have no blue cards for either agenda or non-agenda. Yes, sir. Approval of minutes. <coughs> Approval of minutes of the following Dearborn Board of Education meeting. The, me the regular P-12 meeting of November 25th, 2013, Board Report 13-67. Recommended action, make any necessary corrections and move approval of these minutes. <coughs> so moved. <coughs> Support. Are there any changes or corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, we will attach a unanimous affirmative roll call. Next item. Recognition and acknowledgments. Item A, Forts and Women's Jazz Ensemble Performance. Okay. Always a fun time of year when we get to yeah, hear a performance. Yeah. You are so right. Good evening. Tis the season. One of the unique features of this season is the various music that is associated with this time of year. Music ranges from the Nutcracker Ballet to I Want a Hippopotamus for Christmas. Tonight, we have the Fordson High School Women's Jazz Ensemble here to perform some holiday classics. They will be singing Carol of the Bells and Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. In the latter piece, Fatma Shihab it will be our soloist. Their director is Mr. Matt Laura. Mr. Laura joined our Dearborn team this year, and we are thrilled to have his strong musicianship at Fortson High School. Interesting thing happened about 40 minutes ago. I walked in and heard these women warming up and singing their piece, and I commented at the end that I was really impressed with their blend. And that's when I found out that a third of their group is out very ill. And I told them, you are unbelievable musicians to be wow. able to adjust your blend compensate. in order to, to compensate for that, yes. So you are definitely in for a treat. Let's welcome the Fortson Women's Jazz Ensemble.
Outstanding job. That was beautiful. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Very good. May I make a recommendation to the students? Yep. Yeah. Uh, I was in choir many years ago, and I wasn't as good as you are, but uh, I've read or I've heard uh, brain research indicating that singing is one of the best things for mental health and physical health as well because of the increased airflow. So uh, I hope that your singing in the Fordson Choir. Uh, will last you a long time. I was just at a concert last night and I couldn't help but kind of sing along with, with the music. And I hope that uh, when you have occasions in the future when you feel like you need a pick me up, you'll go back to your singing because it really does cheer you in the downest nice times that you have. Yeah. So Again. good luck to Break you in the future. Song. And <laughs> yes, exactly. It really does work. Good. Yeah. Good. Thank you very much. Next time. We should start every board meeting now. Yeah. yeah, if we all it's started nice by singing, we'd be a yeah. lot happier. Yep. I don't think the, people <laughs> the, the audience, audience would be happier happen. if I started singing. <laughs> but we would be. Always a treat. Next item is commendations. Uh, Fortson High School senior Jed El Haraki will read uh, tonight's commendations. Lots of students participating tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm Jad Al Haraki, and I'll be reading the commendations. Commendations to students at Hague Elementary for their efforts to collect 670 food items that will be donated to the Salvation Army to help those in need. Commendations to the students at Whitmore Bowls for their efforts to collect coins and donate them to Habitat for Humanity. Staff members will also be volunteering their time in December and January to help build houses for Habitat. Special thanks to third grade teacher Robin Philpot for coordinating this effort. Congratulations to eighth grade student Isaiah Goddard, who was selected the middle school student of the year by the Michigan Council of Social Studies. Isaiah was selected for his positive attitude and consistently helping his fellow students. He was nominated by Bryant teacher Ryan Pichet. Commendations to O.L. Smith students Kayleen Burnett, Lexi Schultz, and Marion Ferguson for their efforts to collect more than $200. The students used the money to purchase gifts and then donated them to children in need. The students collected returnable bottles and then threw in some of their own allowance money to purchase the gifts. Congratulations to Dearborn High School's Beirut Yakubi for making the Detroit News football all-state dream team. That means they believe he was one of the best two offensive tackles in the entire state for all divisions. Not only is Beirut is an excellent football player, but he has also achieved a 4.0 cumulative GPA. Beirut Yakubi recently accepted a full ride scholarship to play football at Northern Illinois University for the next four years. Congratulations to the 20 seniors at Dearborn High who have been awarded University of Michigan Dearborn scholarships totaling $322,000. 17 additional seniors have been awarded either the Maison Blue, Deans, and or Henry Payton scholarship. 
Individual scholarship winners include Matthew Enright, Rasha Kanefer, and Eric Sorensen, who have each been awarded a four-year chancellor scholarship valued at $46,000. Commendations to seniors Rami Kadu, Erica Mera, and Noor Kadu, who put together special Thanksgiving treat packages and delivered them to several residents at Session Manor, a retirement complex in Dearborn. Both groups of seniors shared cider, donuts, and an enjoyable conversation during their visit. Congratulations to the students and staff involved in the successful fall production of And Then There Were None. The cast and crew did an outstanding job performing this Agatha Christie classic. Commendations to the students in the Dearborn Magnet High School for their efforts to help the Detroit Soup Kitchen and those that stopped in for a meal. Each Friday, the students package food needed at the soup kitchen and have spent time working at the facility and serving meals. Commendations to the counseling staff at Edsel Ford for their efforts to host a very successful college night at the school. Several hundred students from all three Dearborn high schools and other high schools in the area attended the event that featured more than 30 colleges and universities. Commendations to the Forts and Key Club who helped, who helped out at the annual Kiwanis Bowlathon. The students encouraged and assisted special needs individuals during the event. Special thanks to Forts and Key Club advisor, Zainab Zreek. Commendations to the students at Fortson for their generous gift of more than $720 collected during the annual trick-or-treat for UNICEF. Commendations to the students at Fortson High School who collected more than 15,400 canned good items. All donated items will be given to the Detroit Rescue Mission to feed families in need. Commendations to all district art teachers, especially Ms. Kate Blair, for their successful efforts to host the annual MT Bowls event. Those attending the event purchased a ceramic bowl made by students and enjoyed a simple meal of soup and bread. <coughs> All money raised at the event will benefit Gleaners Food Bank and Heifer International. Special thanks to all, these, all of the sponsors of the event, including Mr. Gary Kuhlman of Park Place. Thank you. Before uh, he leaves the podium, I, I want to talk about this young man a little bit. Uh, a little while back, we had a press conference on school safety and, and driving, and you had a dozen VIPs, sheriff, you know, uh, the mayor, uh, myself, Ford executives, uh, AAA executives, and here this young man walks up to the podium and steals the show with his, <laughs> his comments at the news conference. He did an outstanding job. And because of him, uh, you may notice around our high schools and in our schools and around the parking lots, there's signs about not texting and driving. I can't remember exactly what, what was your slogan? Uh, stop. Stop, stop the, the tax. Stop the tax. Stop, stop the wrecks. So you'll see that around our posted around our parking lots mm -hmm. and in our schools. So and actually, if uh, I may add something for the National yep. Honor Society uh, for my senior project, um, we have uh, uh, it's called the Strive for a Safer Driver. Um, it's uh, I'm actually we're, I'm getting two thousand dollars from AAA to uh, to hold to hold many different events, so such as assembly to. Um, to tell the students how important it is and how how texting and driving is really it's it's very dangerous so quite a special young man will you so. be going to different buildings to do this presentation yeah oh yeah of course very good yeah very thank good. you so much thank you thank you actually in the last couple of weeks i don't know if you've noticed but in the local papers there's been uh, stories about some of these donations in the forts and can good in, in several of those. It's always good to see that in paper. Yes. Next item. Acknowledgement of donations. There are two, a donation of costume fabric of all types, styles, and colors, valued at $3,000, has been offered to Edsel Ford High School by Mrs. Sally Victor to be used by the theater department. And a donation of $3,000 has been offered to the Michael Berry Career Campus by Square One Education Network to be used towards building an electrical vehicle for the IVD Innovative Vehicle Design Competition. So we thank both of those for making those donations possible. No other. Any board members have any uh, accommodations or anything? Okay, seeing none, next item. Special reports, item A, P12 audit report, for Mr. Weston. I'd like to invite Mr. Barna up to uh, in, invite uh, Plant Moran up to give you a report. Uh, the committee did uh, receive the report prior to the board meeting and 
not to steal anybody's thunder, but it's an outstanding report. So, well, thank you, and good evening and happy holidays, President Adams, Board of Trustees, Superintendent of the Year, Mr. Whiston. <laughs> I would like to introduce our fantastic audit team of Plant Moran, Mrs. Teresa Pollock, and Mr. Nate Troyer. These are my the previous ones okay. from the report committee. Mm -hmm. yeah, These are the <laughs> Good evening. Thank Sorry. you for having us here. Uh, as Superintendent Whiston alluded to, uh, we are happy to present uh, what is an outstanding audit report uh, for the Dearborn Public Schools. Um, as you're aware, you're required annually to undergo an independent audit uh, of the basic financial statements as well as compliance uh, with federal program regulations uh, for the district. So our role uh, as your independent auditors is to uh, conduct <coughs> the audit in accordance with generally accepted auditing standards, essentially put your business office through the ringer and uh, validate uh, the significant balances, uh, financial statement disclosures, and internal control and compliance matters as it relates to your grants. So the outcome of that report is the expression of the opinion on the financial statements that I am pleased to report. Um, you, you have an unmodified opinion. That's new terminology this year there, because there has been a change in the auditing standards. It used to be called unqualified, uh, but nonetheless, now it's unmodified. That is still um, the highest level of assurance that you can receive from an independent audit firm that we believe the financial statements are materially correct and that the presentations and accounting methods conform to uh, the appropriate accounting principles and would meet all of the, the state and federal regulations. Um, in addition to the report on the basic financial statements, um, we, with uh, the federal awards report, uh, we select uh, programs based upon their relative size and risk profiles and compliance history. Uh, this year, the Child Nutrition Cluster, uh, Title I Cluster, and uh, Title III uh, clusters were uh, selected as major programs for testing. Um, we do have uh, clean opinions as well relative to the compliance in those programs. There is one finding that is noted in the report, um, but on the whole, uh, very positive results uh, as it relates to all of the audit matters. Uh, Mr. Troyer will uh, run you through a quick slide presentation uh, to show the financial results for the year, and then we're happy to help with any questions that we, we, we can assist with. Good evening, board, and thank you, Terry. So again, a couple highlights from the financial statements, um, starting with the, the balance sheet as of June 30, 2013. Uh, you can see the assets totaled $44 million. Included in that was $10.5 million of cash and investments, as well as $29 million of receivables, with the largest item being $26.4 million of state aid. Uh, two of the 11 payments are not received until after year end, which equates to about 18% of the total. Um, the state set this up to basically assist them with their cash flow issues, which then pushes that down to the school districts to have to borrow. And in your case, as you can see in the liabilities, there's a state aid anticipation note of $11.2 million that was borrowed to assist the school with cash flow needs um, that was subsequently paid in, in late September in full. Uh, the other large liability is accrued payroll, and that's for wages earned prior to June 30th and paid afterwards uh, to the tune of about $16 million. This next slide looks at where the money came from this year, and you can see in, in both years the largest piece is from the foundation allowance as well as other state sources. And with 90% and 91% tied to state, the state, that really demonstrates a dependency on the state economy. Also with the largest piece being that foundation allowance, which is based on that basic formula of your blended pupil count times your per pupil allowance, that illustrates the schools have very little ability to significantly impact the revenue on a yearly basis. Next slide looks at expenditures, and this is by function. You can see that the two largest pieces in both years are instruction and support. Um, instruction increased one percentage point. This relates to direct teacher-pupil interaction. Support decreased from 39% to 38%, and this would be for costs such as library costs, custodial, administration, transportation costs, uh, among others. This 
This next slide shows the expenditures, this time by object. You can see that the number one cost are people costs, as schools are essentially a service industry. And that's really il illustrated by $152.8 million, or 88% of the expenditures being spent on salaries and fringes. This next slide looks at a five-year historical trend of the impact on general fund fund balance. You can see that the current year had a decrease of fund balance of $2.5 million. That was less than the budgeted uh, decrease of $2.9 million. But you can see in total for the five-year period, we have a decrease of $2.7 million. And, and I think you know the takeaway is that with the, the decrease of $2.5 million this year, it's, it's not sustainable as we're, we're decreasing fund balance quickly. This last slide is another slide um, directed at fund balance, and it looks to put a little context about around that amount as far as how much is enough. Um, one way to, to look at that is to compare it to the state average. Uh, the last stated state average, which was as of 6-30-2012, was 10.6% of expenditures, I'm sorry, fund balance divided by total expenditures. Dearborn, as of June 30, 2013, would be at 4.44% which would be below that, stated, that state average. And also this year would be at a five-year low. Another way to look at that would be to say on a 180-day school year, that 4.4% would give you approximately seven days of operations. So again, just trying to put some context around how much that fund balance is. Or isn't. Yes. In order for the state average to be 10 percent, there must be some districts that are sitting on a pot of gold somewhere. I I I question that number. I mean, I want to know dis what our districts. districts with 20 and 30 percent. But it's got to be the median. But it as cannot. To the average. With I know. The I mean, with Detroit all of the districts that are in negative dollars. positions year after year. That does exclude year. the city of Detroit. So I'm sorry. To oh, say okay. okay. And Pontiac and the like. Grand Rapids. Because you know, mm -hmm. Inkster or the, dissolved. It probably doesn't include the districts in the that are having trouble. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it well, just gives us a bad perspective, district. you know, when you talk about the state but average. How many have a pot, have such a positive fund balance? That's well, I know that there's 50 or 60 on the watch list, so that would mean 700. And, you know, Michigan School Business Officials and the, the Government Finance Officers Association make recommendations about what's the appropriate level of fund right. balance to Well, to I, I, yeah, I mean, I know what I would like and, us and to they, have, and they but always getting recommend, there is... You know, somewhere in this 10 to 20 percent yeah. range. Um, and, and so, you know, many districts would have guarded it very closely. Um, when the state funding was starting to diminish and made, made perhaps cuts and changes yeah, sooner we, we, than... Yeah, we were one of those districts. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and, and certainly Dearborn's funding cuts were more substantial than, mm -hmm. than many districts were with, with the loss of um, 20J funding and, mm -hmm. and some of the other special funding that you had. I do uh, agree. I question that because some of the outstate small districts can't have a, l a large fund balance. They've had cuts substantially like the rest of us. You know, I can see well, some and of the Well, and the government's districts. been targeting those districts. Right. I mean, there's been, mm -hmm. you know, potential legislation out there that would force districts to spend their, their reserves before they get funding. That was right. just a exactly. couple of years ago. I mean, exactly. so there have been districts that have been hesitant to keep too much and with all the cuts that have come down mm -hmm. I mean it's yeah, I've been on the board 13 years, years and we've the there are some mm -hmm. districts that we've have made severe thing. cuts mm -hmm. yeah. trustee schoolmaster yeah I'd like to congratulate Sam Barda who is our chief financial officer in effect we adopted a budget that we knew was going to be a negative budget we adopted a budget that called for a loss of 2.9 million dollars because of a lot of things like buyouts and whatever. And so this is actually good news. This is $300,000 better than budgeted. And when you can budget within $300,000. We hit that target. Yeah. And have $176 million to play around with, you've done some pretty good work. Mm -hmm. So congratulations. 
and congratulations to Superintendent Whiston too that I know is very involved in this. Yeah. Trustee Lane. Uh, you mentioned on I think page one that there were wages earned before 630 but they're paid out after is that uh, that's a spread for uh, some of our employees spread out over 12 months I'm assuming okay. yeah the, much of the many of the instructional staff will elect to be paid evenly throughout the year even yeah, yeah, though their yeah. work is performed yeah, during I just the school year to be okay. sure I understood that did you finish your report before we get into too many questions yep yeah yeah okay trustee mcdonald you had your hand up yeah i just wanted to say also congratulations to Tan sam and his team they did an excellent job um but regardless whatever the state average is the fact that we have four percent seems pretty good but when you bring it into terms of that seven days it's operating good. it's oh no that's it's frightening not it's not good, <laughs> it's not good <laughs> yeah. at all not at all yeah. mm -hmm. i mean it means we tend to have to borrow and pay borrowing right. costs mm -hmm. we used to have operate we used to have a substantial enough amount that we didn't have least, to borrow right. for summer for payroll. payroll. Yeah. We all know why we're mm -hmm. here at this and well, and we're, we're doing well, well and all in all. But I mean I don't think that we're I don't think that we're throwing money away. No, I think not that the money all. that we're spending are going to good u is going to good use. The problem is, is we're that we're getting strangled. Yes. Well, one, no. one positive thing is uh, the voter stepped up and passed the bond Absolutely. that freed up, you know, the burden Some of general fund money. Uh, general fund money. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's one way that we can help our own budget without, you know, and uh, that's and very I think much we'll appreciated. We have to continue to be prudent about spending, yes. and uh, <clears throat> protect what we have, and hopefully build a little bit every year. Absolutely. A little consistency from the government would be nice too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Predictability from the government. Any other questions? It, uh, just a comment. Okay. It, it, we used to put a lot of pressure on Dr. Hughes to to put away money every year. So I just wanted to kind of move that towards <laughs> <laughs> Ryan. Sorry, I'm out at the moment. <laughs> and, and you know the the bad part is it takes so long to mm -hmm. to save it. And mm -hmm. so quick to spend it, it seems like. I guess that's with everybody's budget. That's a, that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I remember, maybe it was my second or third year on the board. We had, we were down to zero and we were mm -hmm. borrowing money. So it's cyclical. We're right kind of mm -hmm. right back to where we were, what 15, 18 years ago. Yeah, we so were able to build it up for a while. We <coughs> had that. Well, you know, another name for fund balance is a rainy day fund. Mm -hmm. And we have weather some storms. Yes, yes we, we have. have. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Yeah. And, well, I and agree and with Joe. Mm -hmm. We should start going that direction slowly for, for first, but we should start building it back well, up. Well, it needs mm -hmm. to be built into the budget. Great. Yeah, that's the only but way. But thank goodness we've been able to depend on the fund balance mm -hmm. to pay the bills, or we would be. Because borrowing is very costly. I mean, it it's is. just it's just mm -hmm. throwing money away. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Once there will be more rainy days. I would like to say it's a balancing act, though. This money is given given us for the education of children, and I don't want to see us scripting and saving money at the expense of the kids and taking it away from the uh, children. Absolutely, mm -hmm. that has yep. to be the priority. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> much. Another job well done. Thank you very much. Right. Well, thank you very thank much. You. Um, we also we want to recognize Mr. Varda and the staff in the business office as well. As we said, it is not a pleasant process undergoing an audit, and we did get tremendous support and had very very good results uh, in in all of the tests. So we do appreciate their hard work. And thank happy holidays to all of you. And thank you for the <laughs> lovely music. <Thank> you. <laughs> it was lovely. It truly was. Thank you very much. Next item. <coughs> uh, item B, technology update. Mr. Weston. I invite Troy Patterson to come up to give you his annual update on where we're moving with some oh, technology uh, issues. Yeah. Troy? Good evening, President Adams, board members, Mr. Weston, and audience. It's my pleasure to um, be here tonight to <coughs> provide a technology update. Um, they told me I couldn't go for two hours, <laughs> so I, I am going to narrow down what, what it is that I'm talking about tonight. And you're required to use technology. <laughs> That's right. I am. I am. I've got it. Um, this slide is a little overview of just some of the things that um, the technology department is working on. And I'm going to focus on a couple of things that we have to report every year 
And then a couple of things that are a little more fun and provide some real support to teaching and learning. The first one is SIPA. SIPA is the uh, Children's Internet Protection Act. And this is a reminder that we do follow SIPA every year. Um, and essentially what this law says is this is a federal law. And this says that we must filter or block internet access for pictures that are considered obscene, child pornography, or anything that would be harmful to minors. Um, last time I was here, I talked a little bit about sometimes technology being the wild, wild west. And this is one of those places where we try to bring law and order to the wild, wild west. Um, we do have policies in place. Uh, filtering and knowing what to filter and what not to filter is a very real challenge. Um, I think we do a pr pretty terrific job. There are always uh, hiccups in the giddy up every once in a while. Um, but overall, we are able to provide kids with the access that they need and adults that, with the access that they need. The next um, area I'd like to bring up is COPA, which is the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. And um, essentially this one says that we are going to make sure that um, information is not collected from kids that's not appropriate. And this is really focuses on um, mostly students, kids who are 13 and under. Uh, but we really extend this and make sure that we are um, protecting the information that's shared about kids and what kids can share. Uh, this was first passed in 1998, has been reviewed uh, every five years, and was just recently renewed with no real change. Uh, next up is one that we're really, really happy with, and this is DEC. Um, and there's a very specific reason that we call this DEC. This stands for Dearborn Educational Curriculum, but really, really, it's so that I can do this one little joke, and that is, it's time to get all hands on DEC. <laughs> very good. Um, and, and what that is, is this is our view of the educational curriculum that we provide. Now last year we paid another, uh, another provider for, to do this for us. However, it was something that was kind of confusing for teachers to use. Um, and it meant that not a lot of uh, teachers used it as well as it w could be. We also experienced a couple week outage with it because they were not doing proper backups. So what we're doing this year is instead of paying somebody else for it, we've implemented our very own open source solution, um, which means that we house it, we own it, we have it, we control it. And this is something that's still under development, but I'd like to give you a quick look at this. Um, and the, I have to go back, it's, this is kind of like dancing, I have to go backwards and sideways here. Um, Deck works looks like this. It is very clean and, and straightforward. Teachers sign in using the same credentials that they do for their email and for signing into a computer. Sounds like a little thing, but not having to remember another username and another password lowers the barrier. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little thing, but it matters. Yeah. When, they, when you first look at this, there's two ways of looking at the curriculum. You can look at it by department which works really well mostly for secondary because secondary is frequently set up that way. However, for elementary, you can also look at it by grade level. So we provide flexibility um, whichever way a teacher is more comfortable looking at it. I'm secondary, so we're going to switch back to department. Uh, in, uh, in this, we've laid out each section of the courses by the way that makes sense for those courses. So for example, elementary is laid out by marking period. Um, math is laid out in a way that makes sense to math teachers. Very linear, one step at a time. Uh, and what we have is it, if they click on the course, they can also click on the course description. 
and this will bring up the pacing guide for, for teachers. And it's right there in one window that they can look at. Makes it very easy for the, the teachers to use. And it also has pacing guide. This is math was pacing guide for the entire year and then pacing guide for, sixth, for just the sixth grade as well. Next, they can take a look at the course summary. What this does is this shows all the units that are part of that course. And it's all tied to the common core standards. So teachers don't have to go looking to another site. They don't have to go outside of where they're doing. The common core standards are right there tied to that unit. So they are clear with, with what's happening and why it is that they're teaching each different area. We also provide learning targets, which are all of the common core standards that would be um, taught. And we're working with the different departments to become even more specific to than the common core standards and break those down into things that are very, very usable, objectives by course. Then we have this neat little unit calendar, which gives an overview of what the teacher is um, addressing. So you have these bars that tell you the time frame and these bars you can click on and go directly to that unit. So it's very well self-contained. Here it shows the desired results, uh, again tied to the common core. We can enter e, um, the essential questions, gives you the big view, and the enduring understandings. And then all the resources are available for teachers right there. So we're developing these with the, our various curriculum groups. Um, and they're doing a, a, a really nice job of that. Um, and this just makes this very usable for <coughs> teachers and um, very, very user friendly. And this is something that, again, we are developing and we've made a lot of strides in. So. It is uh, it's coming along. It allows us to customize it to what the teachers need so that it is not something that just looks nice. It's not just a great board presentation, I hope. But it also, <laughs> it also impacts students in the classroom and teachers. And that's the, that's the part that I'm really proud of because I think this makes it so we can communicate and we can get everybody on the same page. There is um, one more thing that uh, I want to address, um, and that is um, our website. Um, we're working on a slight redesign of our website. Um, it's going to have a lot of commonalities. If you're comfortable using our website, it won't be completely different, but there are going to be some substantial differences. When we designed our website six years ago, most people used a desktop computer to, uh, to access the web. Now, um, an awful lot of people are using these, or um, even more so, these, to, um, to access the website. And then there's a few things that we wanted to address as well. We're now providing a lot more services for parents. We're providing a lot more services for students. So we wanted to kind of pull those out as separate um, tabs. I'm going to switch back over here. This is a preview. This, is, uh, again, is still under development. But one of the things that you'll see is we still have the same tabs, similar tabs up here. Um, we do have the schools tab. We'll go straight to schools, so a lot cleaner, uh, a lot better organized. Um, and then we have a parents tab and a students tab. But really what happens is this is called a responsive design. And what that means is that if you're on a mobile device, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look a little bit different if here we go. When we shrink this down, you'll see that main menu switches over to a mobile menu. So it becomes easier to use. It, the same tabs are there, but they're presented in a more logical way for a smaller device. So the other, it just makes it easier for, um, for phone users to access. And if I, as soon as we get large enough again, it switches back to a more full-featured design as well. 
The other thing that we're really working on is we're making the design a little bit flatter with multiple ways of getting to the same spot. Because what we really want to avoid is trying to have somebody think like I think or think like the web designer thinks, but rather looking at it from a variety of perspectives. Um, we've gotten some feedback from parents, from community members, from realtors to say, what are you looking for and how would you think to get there? So we're, we're cleaning that up as well. Can I just uh, interrupt? Just recently I've had two community people. One was looking for um, policies, our policies, and the other was looking for um, union contract mm -hmm. information, and they couldn't find it. So I dug around, and you're absolutely right. It takes a lot of, mm -hmm. gee, it could be here, it could be there. You know, it needs to be a little more direct for people that aren't at your level. Yeah, we're, well, we're working, it's not just my level, though. We're working real yeah. hard at, at how we do that. And one of the challenges that we face is there's so much information um, and that we need to provide and so much information right. that we do provide. It's that, there, you just yeah. have to find yeah, it. Yeah, that, and that's why we're trying to create multiple pathways to kind of get to the same idea. way. And we're really taking this from the perspective of, okay, I'm a parent. Mm -hmm. What is it I would be looking for? How would I like to find it? Mm -hmm. um, and we've talked to some parents and said, okay, and just watched how, yeah. you know, here's, here's what you want to find. How would you find it? And we're watching them go through it so that we can make sure we provide those links to get in where they need to be. And I had someone that was looking for the contracts because they were intrigued with some of our, um, you know, unique uh, agreements. And, mm -hmm. and it wasn't apparent. It wasn't, you know, people of all kinds try to get into our website and find information. Trustee McDonald? I had a parent, <clears throat> and this was uh, last year, but they were looking for something specific uh, regarding the Collegiate Academy. And I said, I know it's there. <laughs> it was, and I went home and I tried to find, and I did, it was listed under the date that that was presented or something obscure mm -hmm. that a parent would never be able to find it that way. So I'm really glad to hear that as well. Yeah. And we are cleaning up those programs. Those programs will have a separate area. <coughs> um, we're working to kind of standardize so that all of our departments um, have a consistent look and feel to it. Um, and again, just make it easier for people to find the basic information mm -hmm. that they want and then as they delve deeper to make sense for them. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. Can I take a quick, since we're yes. on this detour, <laughs> I'm sorry, on the detour. Um, our, our parent connect, is that something that we have, I mean, we have a link to it, but do we have control over that at all? Because no. you cannot bookmark that page. Because when you come back to it, all the options are gone. So the only way to get to it is to go through the whole website. Um, maybe if we can't control that, maybe we should think about putting a link on the main page somewhere so that it's not um, it's not completely obscure but it's very easy on a mobile device to hit Go something to. else yes. like the student connect or you know it's um and that is one of the reasons that we have a, a parent tab and parent connect link right. is going to be right there right it's yeah in fact it's first system, and foremost it's, it's like words that are right next to each other so if you're not and so actually, the, the, the Parent Connect, and irritating. I didn't, didn't show that page, the Parent Connect has a big square <laughs> block. <because laughs> we recognize that's what most parents are, are doing. Yeah, and when you're trying on the fly to find yeah. out what your kid's not doing, it doesn't <laughs> make it any easier when yeah. Uh, yeah. you can't get there. It's an important piece of information for parents. Yeah. Absolutely. But that is something, we, we can provide a link to it, but that's not a website that we right. have control over. Um, I do want to note just a couple of other things. Um, you see big blue button down here and this is a project that we are actually working on with the Mozilla Foundation and we've actually got, gotten grant money that we've worked with um, big blue button on um, in big blue button the big blue button company to develop uh, HTML5 um, versions of their software big blue button does video conferencing so it allows us to share, students to share with other students and <coughs> teachers to share with students. And HTML5 is important because it allows for iPads to be used. So it's, um, Flash is something that's going away. Uh, mobile vi devices do not support Flash anymore. And most video conferencing software uses Flash. 
So we're a conduit for the Big Blue Button Foundation and the Mozilla Foundation to get this done so that all across the world we can use this in education. Um, and that'll help not only our students, but everybody. Another project that we're really working on is the Moodle Hub. And we call Moodle iLearn. What we're really working on is we're working with other educators around the state to be able to share courses, online courses, online materials, to, again, to leverage some of the good things that not only we're doing in Dearborn, but with other educators from around the state. Um, we're going to benefit because there's some excellent teachers uh, that we haven't been able to bring into Dearborn, and we can take advantage of some of their knowledge and skills. Um, and it makes for that sharing just to be um, very, very simple. So we're kind of part of a, a state initiative to work on that as well. And if you'd like me to talk about the other stuff, I'd be happy Thank to. You. <laughs> <laughs> but I love his passion. It is. For technology. Mm -hmm. Trustee McDonald? I have a question. You talked about uh, the DEC program, and mm -hmm. I love the fact that that was customized to fit our needs. Are there any other areas, and I'm assuming that's saving us quite a bit of money, mm -hmm. are there other areas where we could find we, we are uh, sure um, you'll see Zebo listed on there. Zebo is another open source software package that we've put on. Um, Dearborn High School came to us and said they wanted to do a Wall of Fame. Um, if you've been over there, you've seen the monitor that they have running. And usually, digital signage is actually pretty expensive, and there's maintenance fees that we have to keep up with. Uh, instead of that, we implemented Zebo absolutely free they have control of it and that's something that we can replicate in other places as well and we are looking at doing that um, as you know as we as we move along um, we've put in the the a notification system that was absolutely free so that if we need to push out anything to computers that are in the district we can do it immediately um, so it gives us some control over that we have, by putting in Moodle, uh, which again we call iLearn, and in doing some training, um, Chris Kenneberg, who's our webmaster, absolutely phenomenal, um, he and I frequently go to schools and we just hang out for the day and we work with, we provide professional development for teachers that's th what they need. Oops. Uh, so different hours we get different teachers have different questions and they're at different points in their in their journey on providing a blended learning so we're able to provide that kind of support right then and right there uh, and we have all the tools in place so that teachers can take advantage of that and use that I think the website is a work in progress and, and the, yeah, the, the, the website's always going to be a work right. in progress. Right. Um, you know, again, Wild West, things change mm -hmm. rapidly. A couple of years ago, we wouldn't really have predicted that as many people would be using mobile phones to access the web as they are now. Well, if you could, you would have made us a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and what's going to happen in a couple of years, you know, we have guesses, but... It's not saying we're it's absolutely right. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Well, I'm, I'm sure that you and, and Chris Kinberg are on top of it and always looking at the latest and the greatest, seeing and what works for us. And I, I, hope that, I hope that at the end of the day, my passion is really for student learning. Mm -hmm. The technology stuff is fun, but it's a way for us to really support. Tool kids learning yeah. at the end of the day yeah. and that's yeah, where we're that's that's why we're doing this it's about student learning not about the technology yes ma'am that's a way to provide it and we appreciate it any other questions from the board thank you very much i wish i could come up with some of these names <laughs> Moodle. i think i might hang out with them and, and uh, get some professional development myself <laughs> Next item. Action items. Special consideration of an action item. Uh, there are two supplements, Sorry, 12 and 13. Uh, are there any agenda items on this agenda which board members or the superintendent wish to discuss and vote on separately? If there are, we'll, we will exclude these from the motion below. <coughs> I believe 9 and 10 
you need to do a roll call for it? Does the bond need to be separated or can it be done? It does not need to be separated. Mm -hmm. You want to do the resolution? Call? Doesn't have to. It's up to you guys. Don't we use the don't we have a roll call usually on expulsion? Yes. Which is 13. Oh, that's yes. right. There's supplement. So just 13, um, I guess. Mr. Barnard, do we need a roll call on the bond? We need it on Would it make you, you would like to yeah, mm -hmm. on the bond, we do need a roll call. Yeah, I think so. Trustee Lane? So that's seven. I'd like to make a comment on. Nine, 10, and 13 so far. I'm sorry. I'd like to make a comment on number two and number three. Mm -hmm. um, did you want to make a comment on number eight? Yes, I will have to vote. Okay. Just a comment, you don't want to poll? No, no. So I guess we have uh, 9, 10, and 13 poll, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, wait a minute. Okay. Okay, please. Recommended action, move that action items numbered one through 13 be approved as recommended in this agenda with the exception of nine, 10, and 13. So moved. Support. Would you like to ask your questions now or? Mine is a we... question, it's a comment. Comment. So the comment is this, I uh, read the names of the people on the committees. There are maybe two mm -hmm. of them here. And I would just like, and I did not see any women on that committee. I would just like to say, but sometimes that's partially my fault. So, well, I know it because is because I but, couldn't and, take time off of work. Right, I was and, supposed and to be on that committee. I mean, uh, maybe I Allen. missed you someone. I, she sat in on one, but I don't think she was a permanent member of the committee. Right. But in any case, uh, I just want to say that generally speaking, our I feel that our committees should be as diverse as possible. That's the way we get the best decision making. Um, and particularly, now I don't want to throw any stones at architects, but, uh, and I have to be careful. You know, when you're at a public facility, sometimes the bathrooms, uh, people view them differently, women, men, I mean. Sometimes oh, women so end up waiting longer than men. So, uh, um. so I just think that we want to have our committees as broad as possible, as diverse as possible. We don't put urinals in the in the women's. <laughs> I wasn't going to go. I was not going to go there. I wasn't sure. Okay. I didn't want to be beeped out or anything, but uh, I mean, class, sex, race, religion. I we we for the best decision for uh, you know a crowdsource is the best decision so as broad of a committee as we can get and I noticed that there were no women on this committee so did this start I, out I with just want to mention it well, was building a site committee I, yeah. I just yeah. started Maybe taking job couldn't take, time, couldn't take yeah. time off of work so yeah. and Roxanne was on I was Roxanne was and, and, and yeah. neither of your I, names I did were the other. on but mm -hmm. I'm just making the point. I'm not criticizing the committee. Point well taken. All right, let's. <laughs> I just wanted to say, although that's true and it's a good point, I believe the firms that were um, hired, a lot of them had women associates that would they be were part of that. Yeah. Part of that. So, so there will be mm -hmm. still on the job work. And done. we did look for diversity among the firms yes, that we interviewed, absolutely. as opposed to in the interviewing committee. I was uh, very pleased. This is a on the side comment. Um, at the choices uh, for the architects, I'm, I'm happy to see that you know we kind of split up the work a little bit. Uh, we've we've had uh, good results from both of these organizations, and I'm sure they'll do a very good job on these projects too. I'm not familiar with the construction firm, but I trust mm -hmm. that you guys. We share the one that's done the work before. It's just mm -hmm. a different name. Different name. It's oh, the okay. same firm that's done okay. the previous project. Okay, I didn't recognize it. I think kudos should also be given to the individuals that negotiated these contracts after we decided how the work would be allocated okay. because there was a significant discount in the amount of money that were being charged. Good. Yes. And so I called them again. with good news and bad news. I mm -hmm. called them with good news that they could get the contracts if they were willing mm -hmm. to lower their rates. So mm -hmm. we did get significant savings. You're tough. So you're tough. Good for you. It's our money. That was the direction. Mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. It's our money. <laughs> That's what I mean. We have to watch every penny. All right. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments on the items? Hearing none, we'll attach a unanimous affirmative roll call. 
May I comment on number eight? Please. I, we do have Mr. Greg Oakey uh, here in the audience, who you just approved mm -hmm. as the new principal of Stout. Greg, if you could come up, and looks like you have some family members here we're going to want to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, I also, as Greg is coming up, uh, he comes to us, but he used to be here. I think if I remember right, I don't have it in my notes, you went mm -hmm. to... Uh, Bryant and Dearborn High and Henry Hag Elementary. Hag <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> so uh, a long term, and I think your father-in-law used to be an administrator in our uh, district. My, my father-in-law is uh, or was Dr. Art Neville. And, oh, um, okay. okay. And both my parents who are with me are also products of Dearborn schools. Uh, my, my father's a Dearborn High graduate, and my mom's an Etsa Ford graduate. Yes. I'm not sure how that happens. But <laughs> that <is good. laughs> They'll it have happens. to share the story. No. <laughs> it happens. So, but I have, I have my mother and father with me today, uh, Rich and Ann, uh, my wife, Christine, uh, mm -hmm. my seventh grade son, Brendan, and my mother in law, Lynn. Very perfect. Uh, so, th thank, mm -hmm. thank you very, very much uh, for entrusting Stout Middle School to me. Um, it's a, a responsibility they take very, very seriously. Um, you'll be, be very proud of the uh, accomplishments and the leaderships that the students there show. Thank I believe I read much. that uh, mm -hmm. you were also a school board member in Livonia, correct? Oh, yes, uh, yes, I was, and I, I don't envy you any of your <laughs> position. <laughs> um, the last uh, last seven years have, have not been a fun time to be a school board member. So, um, I was I was on the board for five and a half years, and uh, um, I, I can't say I entirely miss it. It's a it's a tough job, especially <laughs> in these is, times. Yeah. I don't I'm know, being County a principal is kind of a really <laughs> difficult position <laughs> too, so uh, I think I'd rather sit on this side of the table. <laughs> it's kind of nice though because you He's have a, a perspective <laughs> that yeah. uh, where we sit and how we have to make decisions. And I'm on Wayne County Association and some of the Livonia people, Dan Lassard, and some of them the I've worked with for years, so good board, good board. Thank you. So we thank you and your family you. for being here tonight. Congratulations and welcome. <laughs> And with that, you don't have to stay for the rest of the meeting either. We've been here for a couple hours. Yeah, getting I know. <laughs> Sorry about the delay. <laughs> let you Normally, we're much quicker at this. Call a meeting. Thank you okay. for coming. Okay, can we return to the items uh, we need to? Do you want summary? We still got Do you want to do the summary? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Item one was the approval of warrants, which are items for payment by the district and have been reviewed by the administration. Items two through four was the approval of non-instructional <coughs> and instructional personnel items for P-12. Item five was the approval of the financial statement. Six was the approval of the appointment of principal at Stout Middle School. Seven, the approval of sale of bonds. Eight was the approval of a Stout principal. Eleven was the approval of donations. Uh, Twelve was the approval of fifth grade social studies books and materials. Number nine, please. Number nine, uh, recommended action, move that the board approve the resolution authorizing issuance, sale, and delegation of 2014 building and site bonds as per board report 13-73. So moved. Support. Any questions on that item? Hearing none, can we have a roll call, please? Hussein Barry? Yes. Joseph Guido? Yes. Mary Lane? Roxanne McDonald? Yes. Amy Schellis? Yes. James Schoolmaster? Yes. President Adams? Yes. Number 10. Number 10, recommended action, move that the board support resolution opposing open carry firearms in schools per board report 13-74. So moved. And support. Any questions or comments on that? Will we be forwarding that to the places that we've mentioned? I believe the uh, resolution mm -hmm. itself says where it will be yes. copied. Okay. Yes, it yes. does. And then yeah. also uh, we had an email asking also from that was uh, a, a uh, Ypsilanti an Ypsilanti board, 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 board member. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> I think this actually would be a good topic to put on the website with contact information for parents to be able to contact the legislature. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe with Absolutely. a quick link. Good idea you know, with some email addresses to uh, blast to everyone because yep. it's an issue that affects everyone. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And there are more and more districts that are taking this position. So I'm proud to be one of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. We will do that. Agreed. Uh, okay. Roll call. Roll call, please. Hussein Berry. Yes. Joseph Guido, yes. Mary Lane. Yes. Roxanne McDonald. Yes. Amy Schellis. Yes. James Schoolmaster. Yes. President Adams. Yes. 
Number 13. Yeah, item 13, move that the Dearborn Board of Education, having heard and considered the evidence in the case of an O.L. Smith school student, <clears throat> shall be permanently expelled from O.L. Smith Middle School and the Dearborn Public School District for one year, 180 days. So moved. S support. Any comments or questions on this item? Another difficult one, as always. Roll call, please. Hussein Barry? Yes. Joseph Guido? Yes. Harry Lane? Yes. Roxanne McDonald? Yes. Amy Shellis? Yes. James Schoolmaster? Yes. President Adams? Yes. Next item. Discussion item? None. Acknowledgement of correspondence? I believe we it's all received. It was been kind of quiet. I yeah. didn't see. Yeah, sorry. Oh. Not <laughs> Everybody's mm -hmm. busy getting ready for the holidays. Hopefully, we'll we'll catch up in January. Yeah. Next item. Uh, Board of Education Affairs Board Member Committee and Organization Reports. I know the Finance Committee met tonight. The Finance Committee met. You saw the results. Once again, congratulations. Not that we lost two point nine million dollars, but we really Gained. were. Yeah, gained three hundred thousand dollars. We appreciate that. Yeah. Any other, uh, Trustee Guido? Yeah. Uh, also, the building and site committee met twice to mm -hmm. uh, hire a construction manager and two architectural firms. And uh, as usual, everyone before us was very well qualified. It was a tough decision. Uh, could have been any, in my opinion, could have been any of the groups that presented. And it's uh, it's hard to watch a group put that much effort into it and not be successful, but mm -hmm. there can only be one. So I think uh, based on, it was a lot of hard work. And I think one took a, a half a day, both of them. Oh, yeah, right? both of them took so, uh, part of a day. Yeah, there was a lot of good questions asked and, and answered, and I think we made uh, a very good decision. So we should see a good results uh, with our bond funds. Sounds like the committee was very thorough. Trustee Lane, you have a comment? Uh, Trustee Schoolmaster mentioned previously the Finance Committee, and I just want to make a note that we would like to have the Finance Committee meet on uh, the HFCC um, item in the audit report. So uh, we'd like to do that as soon as possible, so that not that we want any more meetings uh, before the holidays, but so that we can turn it over. Our Believe responsibilities, Dr. Jensen mm -hmm. is, Dr. Here, Jensen right? is here, so that next year we can turn over our responsibilities and be assured mm -hmm. that uh, the new incoming finance committee is perfectly satisfied uh, that it, all measures have been taken. Perhaps six o'clock on Monday before the board meeting. Would that be appropriate? Okay. You will uh, email the committee and let them know, confirm that, Dr. Jensen. <laughs> Yes. Thank you very much. Any other reports? Next item. Board member commentary. Jesse Lane. Uh, I would just like to thank Superintendent Whiston for uh, returning the music program um, mm -hmm. to the middle schools. Yeah. Uh, we all know that art and music is particularly important. It's not mandated by the curriculum but it's mandated by uh, what we know to be good good rounded education for our citizens so I'm very glad that we've been able to retain as much art and music in our schools as we have when so many other districts have cut so thank you Superintendent Whiston it's something we that believe in it. yeah. I know that our community feels it's yeah. particularly yeah, important it's because it. they've appeared many many times here to yeah. uh, to oppose any music cuts and and we all know that uh, music education and art both uh, stimulate the brain and and uh, help people overall to become um, good citizens so thank you for that restoration I think we all got an email from a student Yes, thank you as yes. well, which I yes. really appreciate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Went out of his way to uh, right. to send us a because I think he had sent a previous mm -hmm. email. He was very concerned about not having the program, so it was nice that he did email us again after it was reinstated. Yes, um, It had been mentioned that perhaps we could get some students uh, in the higher grades who are accomplished or really enjoy arts and music to help um, interest 
Recruit. Recruit. That's a good word. No. The, the um, students in younger gr and younger grades. Students, Has yeah. that been yep, working? They, Has they are working progress? on that. The art music staff are very good at, at you, uh, not using students, but utilizing. Utilizing, thank you. <laughs> utilizing <laughs> students yeah. uh, to go out and interest other students in art and music, and we just have to concentrate on that because we all can talk about how important it is, but when they make their class schedule uh, choices, if they don't pick it, it's right. difficult. So we need to get students interested in it. And we have a great new music, te a music teacher from um, uh, Snow that is taking over the program. And any of you know him, know he's outstanding, loves music, and he'll get the program built. So. Well, while we're mentioning that, maybe we could uh, extend that to video as well. There so you go. Uh, mm -hmm. it is. Uh, I did hear a student talking recently about uh, the demand for sign language at Dearborn High, and it's really nice to see uh, students recruiting other students. It's the way to fill classes. It's the way to fill your shoes when you move on. So. It happens with a lot of our programs, though. Yeah. Like yep. the yeah. Berry Center, the mm -hmm. students go well, and mm -hmm. speak the best to sales other people. students. Yeah. It Parks is the best. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's good citizenship for them. Yeah, absolutely. Trustee Barry, you had a comment? Like uh, Trustee Guido said that uh, construction manager firms and architecture firms were all more than qualified. Sure. Any one of them could have taken on that job. But once we got past the price, we threw in there, we were trying to find the connection to Dearborn, mm -hmm. either employees or supporting the community, what have you. And I think we did that. I'm very confident that with the firms that we chose. So I'd like to see that, Superintendent, I'd like to see that continue with other yep. contracts to the award. That's yeah. there try to keep the tax yeah, money in Dearborn or coming back to Dearborn. Not just, uh, not just on contracts. I, I'm always happy to see it when we hire our mm -hmm. own as far as employees as well. People with Dearborn ties uh, yep. invest more. They're invested in the community. And, mm -hmm. and these two particular like firms have mm -hmm. performed well for, for us in the past. So sure. uh, it's a known commodity and that helps also. Any other comments? Next item. What about wishing everyone a happy holiday? You know, that's we'll a wonderful there. comment. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's a that's great a, comment. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of holidays coming. There are a lot of holidays uh, coming up. So uh, we, uh, we extend our best wishes to all of you for a very pleasant holiday season. Enjoy it. Next item. Request for information and or future agenda items. I, I, slipped, you know, I did get three <laughs> as we were sitting here for board <laughs> yeah. members. Boys, we'll get those. Slow two. night. I know that's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Any other requests? Seeing none. Next item. Superintendent's report. Just three things, real quick. You do have them in front of you, but Dearborn's got talent. The Dearborn's Youth Affairs Commission is announcing their spring community event for all high school students called Dearborn's Got Talent. Whether it's the musicians, dancers, singers, comedians, jugglers. Uh, musicians, gymnasts, or any other type of performance, you're encouraged to participate. A grand prize will be awarded. High schools can sign up at uh, lunch tomorrow and Wednesday at their lunch hours at the high schools. Uh, the live auditions will be held from 2 to 4 and 6 to 8, January 13 and 15 at Etzel Ford. <coughs> the show will be Friday, April 4th at the Ford and Performing Arts Center. For more information, you can contact Romy do at Dearborn High, Julia Harder at For uh, Fortson, Celeste Holmes at Etzel Ford, or Jackie Reve. And the, uh, the, uh, this is really a driven event by students. So this is completely planned for and put together by students. Response to bullying video contest. Uh, we're excited to announce this year's big video contest open to all Dearborn Public School students and staff. The team is looking for creative videos that show how our district's core values relate to our response to bullying program. It's a great opportunity for students and staff to work on creating a video that will deliver a positive message, reinforcing the good work being done in our district and could even save a life because of the message. So uh, get those creative juices flowing and pick up those cameras and start creating your video today. All videos must be submitted to uh, by Friday, February 14th to Jackie Reve or the communications office. Third and last, Fortson's PTSA Dine and Laugh Scholarship event. The Fortson PTA presents their first annual Dine and Laugh Scholarship fundraising event Thursday, December 19th at Biblos, Banquet Hall on Chase Road. 
The event uh, will feature comedians Amir Zahar and Ron Taylor. Tickets are $30 and will benefit the Fortson PTSA Scholarship Fund. And you all have handouts on all three of these events that were publicized. That sounds like a fun event. Unfortunately, yes. I've got another dinner I have to go to that night. That's it? No other? No other. Next item. Future meeting dates, Monday, December 16th, 2013, H HFCC meeting at 7 p.m. at the Andrew Mazzara Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom at Henry Ford Community College. Monday, January 13th, 2014, P-12 Board of Education organizational meeting at 6.45 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Frenchy Boardroom. Monday, January 13, 2014, P-12 Board of Education meeting at 7 p.m. at the Administrative Service Center in the Frank Franchi Boardroom. And Tuesday, January 21, 2014, HFCC meeting at 7 p.m. at the Andrew Mazzara Services and Conference Center in the Rosenau Boardroom at Henry Ford Community College. And you added the meeting to, uh, next week. At That's the a committee college. meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Committee, yeah. committee yeah. meeting. Okay. Okay, happy holidays to everyone. Enjoy the season. We're adjourned. Thank you.